Hi guys, so today I'm finally getting around to doing the long-awaited tattoo tour. There are a few reasons why it's taken me so long to do this video, but I want to mention one of them, which is my body image. Recently I've had stretch marks appear on my legs and they've slowly been getting worse. I think it's because of a few different reasons that I'm not going to get into. But yeah, I have been finding it quite hard to be okay with them and they are kind of around some of my tattoos so obviously they would be visible in this video and that was just something that I wasn't comfortable with yet but I'm feeling okay about it and um, I'm not going to try and edit them out or anything. The main reason I wanted to mention this was just in case anyone was thinking about leaving any rude comments um, that is not welcome here at all. So please just keep all your negative thoughts to yourself. The other thing I want to quickly mention is there will be one tattoo that I'm not going to be mentioning in this video. It's kind of a hard, a tricky situation, but it was my second tattoo and um, I wasn't aware of this at the time, but I'm pretty sure it is pretty much a direct copy of another tattoo. And that is something that is 100% not okay. Please never copy anyone else's tattoo. It is personal to them. And that artist has gone to a lot of effort to design that for that person. By all means, if you see any of my tattoos and you like them and you want to use them as a reference, that's totally okay. You can take it to your artist and say, you know, I want something along these lines and they will put their own spin on it, make it yours, make it different and just use it as kind of an inspiration. I could talk about this forever, like this is a whole separate video but I just want to mention that just in case you wondered why I was missing one out. I am working on getting something done to it. I'm still not 100% sure what I'm going to do but I was just naive to it at the time and like I said I wasn't aware so yeah. I think that's all I have to say before I start. I will leave links in the description to the tattoo artists that I use. I'm going to start at the top and work my way down so I'll go down one arm, um, kind of like across my chest, down the other arm and then I will go down my legs as well. Yeah, hopefully this isn't too long and let's just get into it. Okay, so starting with my left arm, right at the top here, we have a stag beetle that has a skull as its body. So I got this guy in October 2019. Pain-wise, it wasn't too bad actually, it was definitely one of the easier ones, definitely on the lower end of the pain scale. And why did I get it? Because I wanted it. <laughs> it's just a design that I like, it has absolutely no meaning behind it. I really like the way that bugs and insects come out as tattoos, so yeah, that's why I got that one. This one was done by Kyle Shields, who works at Empire Inc. in Edinburgh. Um, Empire Inc. have two studios, one in Glasgow and one in Edinburgh, so... I always go to the Edinburgh one, but if any of you are interested, he does also work in Glasgow. So then moving down, the next one would be on the back of my arm, and that is a kind of coffin shape, blacked out, with two negative space silhouettes, I guess you would call them. I need to definitely go and get that reworked slightly, just touch it up. Pain scale, absolutely fine. I, again, on the lower end of the pain scale, and I got it. Same reason as the other one, just because I wanted it. I really love dark tattoos that have a lot of black work in them. It's kind of vampire style. Um, the guy is biting the girl's neck. It is a guy and a girl. I have had people that have asked me if it's two women and no it's not. I don't mind if it was two women. Like that's a pretty cool tattoo as well. So however somebody wants to interpret it is totally fine with me. Like I said, there's not really any meaning to it. It's just a design that I like. So the gender of the two people is irrelevant. But in my head, I got it being a guy and a girl. So he's kind of like biting her neck, which is quite vampire-y, sultry. I like it. I'm a big fan. That was done by somebody called Daniel at, I think he works at a place called Waverly Street Tattoo. That studio is near me in Fife. I got that one in July 2018. So the next one down is this cute little guy on my inner bicep area. I really love bats. That's the main reason I got this tattoo and he's bloody adorable and I love his kind of ripped wings. 
I really wanted that to be included in the design and he's holding a little moon with some stars around it and I just love it. It's probably one of my favourite tattoos. Pain wise it was Mm, it wasn't bad to start off with towards the end because there is a lot of black it was kind of a lot of going over the same areas and it started to get a little tender but it was not that bad um, it was definitely manageable so I would say maybe it was low end of the pain scale to start off with then it maybe went up to the middle a little bit towards the end the only thing about this one was afterwards for the next few days it fucking hurt like it was really painful it just kind of felt really swollen and tender and it kind of hurt to like lift up my arms or move my arms but apart from that like the pain was fine that was done by Kyle again and I got that one in February 2020 so this was actually the one that I got right before we were put on lockdown the whole COVID situation. Then we have the raven on my arm and this is the one that you'll see most of the time it seems to be in almost all of my pictures because of the placement of it. It's very visible. Again, I feel like I'm going to be saying this a lot but there is no meaning behind this tattoo. I really love ravens. Um, some people think it might be a crow to be honest. It could be either. The same with the one on the back of my arm and like how people interpret it. That's totally fine either way. If you want to say it's a crow, fine. If you want to say it's a raven, fine. In my head it was a raven when I got it and yeah, I'm really happy with this one. It didn't really hurt at all actually. Again, this was very manageable, very easy. Absolutely love it. It was done by Kyle again at Empire Inc. And I got it done in... August 2019. Next on my arm is the one on my forearm and there's actually two tattoos here. I'll start with the one that is underneath it. It was my very first tattoo. It was actually Daniel who did the coffin on the back of my arm who did this one. It's just an arrow with the words warrior through it. That one obviously does have a little bit more meaning, just kind of what you would expect, just the whole keeping strong through hard times. Very cliche. <laughs> it wasn't painful at all to get done. Such a good placement to start off with. Such a good tattoo for my first tattoo because it was not painful at all. So I wasn't scared to go back and get more, obviously. But yeah, so that was my first one in January 2017 and I still like it. I never stopped liking it or anything but the placement and the size of the tattoo just really bothered me. It's such a big placement for such a small tattoo and because I want to be pretty much covered, it needed something else. It would have been so hard to work around. So I decided to get it covered with this tattoo and this is just a snake with a potion ball. No meaning behind it. I love snakes. I love magical things. <laughs> I actually got this done last month so July 2020. I was actually meant to get this tattoo done uh, in March and then everything had to shut down because of Covid so that's why I've only just got this one but I'm super happy with how it's turned out. Kyle did this one again and he did a great job of covering it up and it just fits that space so much better now. I'm really happy with it. Pain scale same as the bat actually, it wasn't too bad to start off with, towards the end it started to get a little bit tender. I think that's quite common with tattoos though, I've found with a lot of my tattoos when I'm right at the end that's when it starts to get kind of painful. The last one on this arm is just this little cute moon and this is actually a hand poked tattoo. I didn't do it myself or anything, it was done by a hand poke artist. What I think people can also call it stick and poke but I've always known it as being hand poked, that's what this one is. I do have a bunch of hand poke tattoos but obviously we'll get through those. There's not too much to say about it, it's just a cute little moon design for my wrist, nothing fancy. Pain scale, totally fine, barely even felt it. I think hand poke tattoos in my opinion are a lot less painful than tattoos done with machines. I got this done in August 2017 so it is one of my older tattoos and yeah I'm happy with it. It was done in a studio near me in Fife, like I said, by a hand poke artist. So that's everything on this arm. The plan, I don't have much of a plan for this arm. I really, if anyone has any suggestions of what I can put here, please comment because I'm really struggling with what I want to put there. Um, and I want it done because it's that big space is just really bothering me. Moving on to my hands, I do have little 
dots on every finger. I really should have done my nails for this video, but oh well. My finger tattoos were a very kind of random impulsive tattoo. I didn't have many tattoos at the time, so getting finger tattoos that are visible all the time is... I mean, they're small, but it's still a big deal, right? The tattoo artist just kind of said to me, like, fancy getting dots on your fingers, it's something I want to do. And I was like, yeah, sure, I think I went in the next day and got them. <laughs> and that was that, uh, basically. These were hand poked as well. If you're gonna get little finger tattoos and things, I actually would definitely recommend getting them hand poked because they don't fade as fast, they last a lot longer, so they're gonna hold up on your hands a lot better. Or that's what I've been told anyway. And mine definitely haven't faded and I've had them for quite a while now. I got these done in October 2017. Honestly, they are one of my favorite tattoos. They mean absolutely nothing, I just love them. Just absolutely love them, I don't know why. I think it's maybe because I see them all the time and they're just so random and just, I don't know, I just like them. They weren't painful because they are so small, however, I can imagine finger tattoos being extremely painful because even just those little dots, like I could, I could feel how it would feel to have something bigger there, if that makes any sense. So then I will go on to my ribs and move across as to what I have there. So the one on my left side is just a small number seven. I got my lucky numbers tattooed on me and seven being one of them. The other one on the other side is 13. So those are my two lucky numbers, seven and 13. Seven because I was born on the 27th of the 7th, 1997. So there's a lot of sevens in my birthday and that's just a number that has always stuck with me. And also number 13, a lot of people see that as an unlucky number. My mum was born on the 13th of November and she has always told me that it is a lucky number and I trust her. So that has always been one of my lucky numbers as well. I mean, lucky numbers, to, I guess it's not like they are scientific or anything, but it's just nice. I like it. I like having lucky numbers and those two numbers mean a lot to me. Pain scale, they were hand poked as well, so low pain scale even though it was on my ribs. I can't remember if I got them done on the same day. I don't think I did, but both of, both of them were done in October 2017, the same as my finger tattoos. Um, I think I actually got the number 13 on the same day that I got my finger tattoos done. Not sure about the number seven. I feel like that was a different day, but mm, I don't know. Right in the middle of my chest, in my sternum area, I have a snowflake. I got this just because I love snowflakes. I love winter, I love snow, I love the cold. I just love it. <laughs> I don't know how many times I'm gonna say the word love in this video, probably quite a lot, but snowflakes and snow and winter, all that just, so close to my heart. So I decided to get that tattooed in the center of my chest. Because I have kind of weird shaped ribs, this actually took forever to get the stencil to look like it was centered in my chest, just because I'm so weirdly shaped. It was painful actually, but in a weird way, I can't even describe the type of pain it was, but it, it wasn't fun. And that was hand poked as well, and I got that done in December 2017. Okay, so then on to the other arm. I only have two on this arm, so not many to talk about. Firstly, at the bottom, I have this little sun. It kind of goes with my moon. This sun is actually the sun from the Disney film Tangled. I love that film, it's Rapunzel with her long blonde hair. It's Disney. You can't go wrong with Disney in my opinion. That was hand poked as well and I got that on August 2017, the day before I got the moon tattoo. And then moving up, this tattoo is a tattoo that probably has the most meaning to me. I actually have this tattoo matching with my mum. We both have the same tattoo and it's basically just a little teacup. It's adorable and the reason that me and my mum got this is we're very close to each other and she growing up has always told me that a cup of tea fixes everything. So whenever I was or I am in a bad place or feeling crappy or anything like that, she would always make me a cup of tea and that's just something that's always stuck with me. A cup of tea fixes everything. So there is some life advice from my mum. Feel free to take on that wisdom for yourself. 
uh, obviously it's 100% true. That was hand poked as well and I got this in July 2017. We both got them on the same day obviously and yeah it means a lot to me. I will never cover up or get rid of it. It just has a special place in my heart. This arm, I'm not actually too sure what the plan is for it. Obviously I'm going to get it covered. I just, I'm not really too sure where to start. I don't know if I want to try and think of a full idea for it or just kind of do like I did with this arm and just start slapping things on there. I don't know. Okay, so my legs. I will start with my left leg and then go into my right leg. So on the left, right at the top, my first one is my thigh tattoo. And this is a Thestral from Harry Potter. A lot of people think it is just a dragon, which again is totally fine. If you don't know Harry Potter that well, then you wouldn't know that that's what it is. And I mean, I want a dragon tattoo anyway, so that's cool. But yeah, it's a Thestral. I really love them. They're just so dark and creepy and weird. <laughs> and I thought it would make a really cool tattoo, so. I got that on my thigh. It was pretty fucking painful. A lot of people say that kind of bonier areas are worse to get tattooed. I find the opposite. All of my meatier areas, that's, ugh, that sounds horrible. Um, all of my areas with more chub or more muscle are more painful in my experience. And this one, yeah, this was spicy. This was a spicy tattoo to get done and it, it's probably one of the ones that took the longest as well. By the end of it I was done I was like, do you know what, I don't fucking care if it's finished, just ugh. But totally worth it of course and it was Kyle who did this one and I got it done in December 2019. I'm still not sure what I'm going to put on my other thigh. Moving down on the back of my thigh and this is one that you don't see very often because it never really shows in pictures or anything. But it is just a little um, Aladdin's lamp, a little genie lamp. It also has some feathers from Pocahontas in it. So it's kind of two Disney films meshed into one tattoo. It's really cute and of course Disney again. I have a few Disney tattoos. Uh, Disney means a lot to me. <laughs> that was hand poked as well and I got that done in August 2017. Then on my shin, I have a rose held by a skeleton hand. This one, again, doesn't really have too much meaning. It's romantic, but in a dark way, dark romance. I love that kind of stuff. I always said that I would like never get a rose tattoo just because so many people get rose tattoos, but I caved. I mean, they're beautiful. Like, there's no denying that. In order to make it slightly different, I decided to get it as more of a closed off rose rather than a an open rose. I think it's really nice. I'm really happy with it. it. Wasn't painful at all. I actually found the shin one of the easiest places in my experience. The only thing I did notice, and it was not because it was painful, but it really made my leg twitch like crazy. That's the only thing with tattoos on my legs is I find my legs will just twitch and I can't stop it. It's totally out of my control and it's extremely annoying. So the first like half hour of this rose tattoo my leg was kept twitching and I was like oh, I'm so sorry like I don't know why this is happening I can't stop it but it's not painful so and um, but it's just it's quite annoying and I find it quite embarrassing that kind of stuff happens you can't help it your body doesn't know your body's like what the fuck are you doing to me you know so I can't blame it it was Kyle who did this one and I got it done in March 2019. So then moving around to the back of my leg on my calf, I have my only coloured tattoo and it is kind of um, Medusa inspired. Obviously she doesn't have the snake hair or anything but she's kind of like a snake lady and I'm really happy with how this one turned out. I wanted her to have kind of that grey wash face with then these bright red cheeks. I think that's really pretty. She's got the snakes kind of on her head and going through her hair and I just, I love it. This is the only one as well that was done in two sessions. So we split over two and um, it took quite a while. Color tattoos always take longer. Yeah, I also said I would never get color tattoos because I love color tattoos but I just don't think that they really suit me. 
but this one needed the color I think. If this tattoo was all black and grey, I just don't think it would have the same impact. So yeah, this is my only color tattoo at the moment. Um, pain scale, this one was pretty nippy as well. Same, like I said, the kind of fattier areas on me I find worse. So it was a similar pain to my thigh. It was just really sharp and nippy. And I, I don't want to get too much into this, but the woman who was getting tattooed next to me during my, I think it was my first session, I can't actually remember which session it was, but the woman getting tattooed next to me was talking about a subject that was a little bit triggering to me, um, but being such an introvert and so socially awkward, I couldn't be like, uh, can you stop talking about that please? So I just said nothing and I was lying there in pain from getting tattooed and having to listen to this woman talk the entire time about this, like about subjects that I was just like, please stop talking about. Oh, it was so, uh, it was an experience. Obviously I got through it. I tried to just kind of zone out, but she was quite close to me and had quite a loud voice and I had nothing else to really focus on apart from the pain. So I was like, okay, do I focus on this painful conversation or the pain of the tattoo? And yeah, it was, yeah. Uh, Kyle did this one too and like I said this one was done in two sessions so the first session was in December 2018 and the second session to finish it off was in January 2019. So the last one on this leg is by my ankle and it is another little Disney tattoo from Mulan. It's the cricket from Mulan. I think his name is Cricky. and um, he's the lucky cricket and I love Mulan. It's one of my favourite films. So of course I had to get a tattoo from it and that's the one that I decided to go with. He's really cute and he's supposedly lucky. That was hand poked as well in September 2017. So moving on to my other leg, I don't have anything at the top of this leg, um, front or back. So everything is down the lower half. So first of all I have a candle tattoo. This was actually the first tattoo that Kyle from Empire Inc did on me. Not much meaning to this one either. I've just wanted a candle tattoo with the kind of wax melting and it has the rays coming out of it with some cute little fireflies and then to kind of round everything off it has little leaves kind of wreath style. Not much to say about it, I really like it. Candles, I love candles. Pain scale, even though this was on a slightly chubbier area, I don't know if I should be calling it chubbier area but slightly, I don't know what to call it right? fleshier, like all the words just sound awful so even though it was done where it was it didn't really hurt much at all. So like I said that was done by Kyle, the first tattoo that he ever did for me and that was in October 2018. And then on my shin I have a rat holding on to a hand. If you follow me on Instagram you'll know I have pet rats so I do love rats and I love the way they look as a tattoo. <laughs> That's pretty much why I got it. I just thought it would make a really cool design and he's so cute. He's got his cute little face and his cute little nose and he's just oh he's just so adorable. Same as the other shin, same pain um, scale I would say. Not bad at all. That was done by Kyle as well in July 2019. Next tattoo I have is one of my favourite ones and this is a scorpion holding a black love heart. I always wanted to get a scorpion tattoo but this tattoo does actually have some meaning behind it. Uh, both my parents are Scorpios, as in their star signs, so that kind of like represents the two of them as well. And yeah, apart from that there's not too much to say about it except that I really like it. Definitely high up on my favourite list. Um, it was a wee bit painful, it wasn't... Well, I don't actually really remember it that well, as in like the pain. As far as I'm aware, if it was that bad I would remember it, so... As far as I'm aware, it was pretty average in terms of pain. Kyle did this one again. Like I said, he has done majority of my tattoos. And I got that one done in May 2019. So then I have a salt shaker. And this is kind of a random one, but basically I'm a salty bitch. Again, probably one of my favourites. I love it. I love the way it turned out. This one was done by Kyle as well. Pretty low on the pain scale and I got this one done on November 2019. Then I have this tiny little kind of doorway, stairway. I'm not really too sure what you would call it. It's another really random impulsive one. But I mean it's pretty cute. It's the little kind of stairway to 
the unknown. It has a few little stars, um, kind of like, I guess as if you were going up in space, something magical. I don't know, I don't know what it is. It is whatever, whatever the person wants it to be. That one was hand poked, it uh, wasn't painful at all. And I got it done back in January 2018. So I think this is the last one, last but not least. Um, it's just a little cute traditional tooth tattoo. It's quite a common gap filler when it comes to traditional tattoos and I just, I think they look really good and it fit in that space perfectly. Not much to say about it, obviously it doesn't mean anything. Kyle did this one as well and it was done at the same time as my salt shaker. So I think that is it. I think I finally got through them all. I did ask on Instagram, I did a poll as to whether you would rather have this as one long video or two shorter ones. Majority people said one long video so you know, it, this video is probably going to be pretty long, but that's what you guys said you wanted. This was quite fun for me to make, to go through all my tattoos and remember when I got them. And it also makes me extremely excited for new tattoos. I do have an appointment coming up in September. And I'm planning on kind of trying to get in as many as I can this year, seeing as I've had to take a break from it for so long. So I will definitely, at some point in the future, have to make a part two to this where I can go through all my new ones. If you guys have any tattoos, comment down below. I'd be interested to know how many of you actually have tattoos. It was quite nice to do something that wasn't hair related. Tattoos are a huge passion of mine so I obviously love to talk about them. If you guys have any other non hair related uh, video ideas for me also drop a comment down below. My Instagram handle will be in the description box so definitely come follow me on there if you don't already. Like, comment, subscribe, all that good stuff and I will see you guys in the next one.